Good morning. Happy Thursday, April 11th. Plant-based morning show sponsored by Compliment. Lovecompliment.com. This is the best show of the week. Thursday morning is typically the best one. Best show for the best day of the week. So that uh, lines up perfectly. <laughs> We're going to talk today about uh, the big news, of course. Well, there's some legal stuff that's interesting. The France uh, legal victory for the plant-based meats for now. Um, but also some people drink Coca-Cola for breakfast. And I didn't ever know this. And they're saying it's a way... It's something we can learn as plant-based people. We can learn about how to spread our movement that way. Uh, Doug, you ever drink cheer wine for breakfast or anything like that? It's a Southern <laughs> thing. Uh, uh, no, I don't. I, I, I do not do that. But you know what? I can see why it would be refreshing. I'm not going to lie. I mean, if you're going to get your uh, your your caffeine from somewhere, it's certainly it's it's not better for you than coffee. I'm not trying to argue that or, or as good for you as coffee. But, mm -hmm. um, you know... I could see why it'd be refreshing in the hot, hot South, the deep South. Yeah. Right. You can see that. And it, I mean, the, where it stems from, I think is not so much adults using it as, as a caffeine drink. Although maybe that, I think Coca-Cola tried to jump on that possibility, but it's more of kids. Parents gave their kids the drink and now the kids want to, or the, those kids are grown ups, and they want to give their kids the drink. And I guess I can see how, like, you know, when you thought juice was a really good thing for the morning, uh, you know, back in the dark ages of 1980s yeah. or whatever, maybe it wouldn't seem that different than juice, you know? Maybe it would have. Maybe juice would have seemed like supremely healthy back then and, and Coke never did it. Who knows? But uh, anyway, we'll get into that I mean, in a little I remember bit. doing an experiment where um, in in elementary school where people brought in teeth that they would lose or mm -hmm. like, I don't know, it was like a certain time and they put it in, soaked it in water for a week and orange juice and then Coke and, you know, in various drinks. And, uh, mm -hmm. and orange juice decayed the tooth just as much as anything else did. Yeah, I believe that. When I, that my, I have very sensitive teeth, and I can feel orange juice more than anything else. I don't really drink much soda, so I don't notice it then. But if I drink orange juice, uh, I definitely have trouble chewing stuff later in the day. It, Kate Rivercat says, good for a hangover. And that is probably when I've had soda for breakfast. I, I am sure in college, uh, many times I would go to, a, <laughs> go to a fast food spot, get a greasy biscuit and some Coke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. I, I've never really done it for breakfast, I don't think. But I've I've definitely attempted to cure a hangover with a Coke before. You know who um, uh, who drinks Diet Coke for breakfast? No. Who? Former President Trump. Oh, yeah? Does he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. 12, 12 Cokes a day is what I think they used to say. Is that right? Jeez. Yeah. Terrible. All, all Diet Cokes or some, some regular Cokes? No, I think it's just Diet Coke. I think that's his drink. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Uh, people here, let's see, Mr. Jeffrey, Jan Daniel P., Britters, Kate, uh, Carmen, Kelly K., Alex Turton, Garuda Legends, I think that's it, who have checked in so far saying good morning. So good morning to all of you. Thank you for showing up. Uh, Alex Turton says, cheer wine for the win. I think I saw a cheer wine uh, beer the other day. <laughs> Does that seem right, Doug? Cheerwine beer? I I, it was a Cheerwine collaboration. The Cheerwine was in the product, and I can't remember what mm. it was. I, I think it was beer. But I'm not What's your sure. take on Cheerwine? I, I don't know if I've had it. Does it just basically taste like cherry you had it? I don't know. I always see it. I don't. I, mean, I definitely didn't have it as a kid. Since I've moved to the South 12 years ago or something, I started seeing it. I don't think I've had it. What is it like? Cherry Coke? Yeah, it's, just, it's basically the same as Cherry Coke. We used to... Um, when we would come to North Carolina for, uh, for like the beach when I was a kid, mm -hmm. um, we would stock up on a bunch of cheer wine, go to the store. First thing, right when you got there, get a case of cheer wine. Uh huh. Drink yeah. Choice. I can see that. I could see someone mm -hmm. doing that. Is it, is it better than cherry Coke or just same thing as cherry Coke? Or uh, I mean, I, I've never done a taste test. I don't know. I think it's just one of those things that's unique to North Carolina. So you, you have yeah. your loyalty. Right. right. Yeah, that's cool. I'll have to give it a try. Uh, I do like cherry Coke. If I'm going to get a Coke, cherry Coke is a top contender. Uh, the really. beer is Cheerwine Ale from Noda Brewing Company. Hmm. Local Charlotte spot for you. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of their beers, though, but I'd try that hmm. one for sure. All right. Good. So we'll get to this sort of thing in a little bit. Um, in the meantime, you told me yesterday that Carly, who we had on the show a week ago today, is now a New York Times number one best-selling author, which is something even I can't say. Even someone like me can't even, say that. Even, even you can't say it. She has officially surpassed you 
Yeah. Up until agreed. now, you you were you were. Uh, I was arguably you as influential near, as Carly up until now, but now now she's removed all doubt of that. Uh, uh -huh. But anyway, I'm I'm extremely happy for her. Uh, I sent her a text last night and I said, "You deserve it because she does deserve it." I mean, she really she's just puts out great content and she's innovative and she's does she works hard. And you know what? She was a pro on that interview when we had her on Thursday. I know she was like, so good. I was not, not that she was bad before, but that was before uh, when she was on No Made Athlete Radio was was like before her other book came out, and mm -hmm. or maybe just just as it came out. And she was new then, you know, at least new to doing podcasts and that thing. But you can tell she's just done so many now because she was excellent. She filled in perfectly for you, better than you, I think. I think so too. Honestly, I was listening to it. I was like, man, this is, <laughs> this is really good. I'd rather listen to this than uh, than whatever I have to say. No, that's not true. She, no one can replace Doug, <laughs> except for, for Matt Frazier, because you put your name as Matt Frazier. Oh right? shoot! So you might right. want to change that. <laughs> fix that. In the meantime, Mr. Jeffrey says, "Anyone ever had Cali Mocho, red wine mixed with Coke? I'm curious oh, to yeah. try it. It also grosses me out. I had that in Spain. That was the thing mm -hmm. that the underage kids drank." when I was in Spain uh, and they had it in a leather. Uh, no, so that was just red wine, but they would do it to go out at night, mix Coke and red wine. And uh, it was awful. I hated it. And I tried it again I don't know, a few years ago when I went back with somebody who, one of my old exchange students and we, we met up and it was just as bad, but worse actually now. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, uh, it's, they used it's to drink it in Chile as well. You did too. And it was same. In it was Korea. called that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, I don't know how the X in the selling. So maybe, is it a Mexican kind of idea? I mean, it's, there's no chance. I mean, they didn't have Coke in the Aztecs when they were using X in Spanish words. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. But it, um, yeah, it was like the worst, the worst of the worst wine. El Gato. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, you know, Coke. <laughs> yeah. Did you like it? I mean, no, but I drank it several times. <laughs> It's just not better than it. regular wine. I mean, I guess it cuts it no. and it cuts the alcohol so you can drink it more, but I, why wouldn't you just drink the, I'd just rather drink the worst red wine than that. <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know, it's like a, it's, it gives you the, uh, the, the rush of the caffeine though. You know, it's yeah, like, uh, it's like surge. Is that what it was called? Yeah. No, no. no surge is like, surge is not, uh, what was the, what was the one that got banned? It looked like a battery. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I had a friend who used to drink that stuff and it would go crazy. The worst I've ever gotten was drinking that stuff. <laughs> they were like the orange flavor, right? I've ever gotten. Weren't they orange? Um, yeah. I mean, there were a couple flavors, but. Um, <laughs> All right. In the meantime, while you're looking at that, Big Media S. Claus says, what's her book called? The bestseller. Uh, yeah, the new one is Scrappy Cooking. The first one was Plant You. Mr. Jeffrey already answered that. I planted you, I think, got to number four on the list, as I recall. She got the same as uh, Robert and I did with Plant Based Athlete, but now number one, which is not what many, many people cannot say that. That's, that's a very special accomplishment. Sparks. Sparks, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And there's also Four Loco. That, that's the one that got banned. I don't know about Sparks. Oh, really? I didn't know anyway, that. do not recommend that to anyone ever, no matter how young and reckless no, you no, are. No, no, no. You don't want to do that. Idea. I remember I did a little bit and I would wake up in the night with my heart just pounding. I'd wake up from, mm -hmm. a, from a sleep and it'd be like, something is wrong with this. So I didn't I didn't do much of that. Yeah. Bad idea. All right. Um any other goings on? I went to the dentist this morning, got the old nitrous treatment, which I oh. like to do before cleaning, minimize anxiety and stuff. And uh it didn't it didn't really work very well. It, it, it's starting to wear off. Like I noticed each time I've gone, I think it's been four times now. Once for work three times just for cleaning uh they just give it to you for cleaning so you can just ask for it and they'll give it to you well you have to pay for it it costs money but like that's one of their okay. selling points they're like the anxiety free dentist and they you know they, they cater to people like me who have had bad experiences and you know otherwise mm -hmm. wouldn't go to the dentist at all but it doesn't, doesn't work it's just it's less and less and i asked if you typically build up a tolerance they said no <laughs> so now they're like next it's time all the you, it's all the nicest you're doing not at the dentist that's the problem <laughs> i made that joke to the to the Woman in the, oh, you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, so they said next time, if you want, we, we can give you like a Valium or something ahead of time, and then you do that and the nitrous together. You have the ooh. you have Valium ahead of time. And I said, I don't want to get into that. I'm not. No. Then you can't even drive home. Drug dentist. Right. Right. Exactly. 
certainly couldn't do a show right afterwards. I don't think. Maybe. <laughs> well, maybe you could. Maybe, maybe that'd be a good one. Uh, I went to the gym this morning. Maybe my fifth oh, yeah, time. I think lifting weights. Yep. I was part of the early morning crew again. It's a whole scene there. And, you know, I, I just really, I, I don't know. I kind of like that there's this whole scene. Like November the Project vibe, people who are up early before the rest of the world. I mean, it's not November Project vibe where everybody's like hugging each other and stuff. But <laughs> right. I don't know. It's just yeah, there's just like all these people that are just doing their thing at yeah. 5.45 in the morning, you know, that while everybody else is sleeping. You know, normally I'm, I'm running or whatever and I'm by myself or with a couple other people. And you, you mm -hmm. feel like really alone and quiet, but no, there's like this whole like people pumping yeah. music and pumping iron and right. having a good right. time. It's, I don't know. It's nice. Um, but yeah, I think this is the first, the, maybe the fifth time in this uh, new gym cycle that I'm in um, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing progress and I'm yeah. lifting heavier weights. It's good. Yeah. All right. Good. Uh, is it the same people that you see each day there who are like same group, same groups? Uh, some of them, but I've only done two of these early mornings. The rest of them have been other parts of the day. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah, I thought we noticed it was like the exact same people. Almost because no, very few people randomly go to the gym on a on a morning time. If you're going in the morning, you're yeah. you're on a plan. You're on a program. Yeah. Um, and so you see the same people every single time. I noticed. All right. Uh, before we get to the weather report, Vegan Stein says four loco sounds terrible, but I don't think it should have been banned. It's easy to combine caffeine and alcohol if that's what you want to do. I never really thought about that. But I guess it, I like think it was that, like four. It was the equivalent of four coffees or something, plus thirteen percent alcohol. I don't know something ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just you know a couple of those. You're just right. trashed. Like, but, I mean, does it make sense to ban something if like if you really if you wanted to make it, you you could drink, you could mix a bunch, you could make calimocho if you wanted. Right? Yeah, Pretty I mean, of course you could. So does this banning? I guess it helps a little bit. Makes it a little bit harder to get. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I think. About I mean, that. I think it's just one of those things where it's like you, if you're making something yourself, you probably know what's in it. If you just mm -hmm. buy something off the yeah, shelf. Yeah, that's a good point. Right. You don't really like, understand. Like Panera, what's in it. Panera charged lemonade. Exactly. Yeah. What if anybody ever put, uh, put vodka in those things and made it, made it really charged? That probably, yeah. that wouldn't go well at all. Because <laughs> you killed somebody without any alcohol in it. Yeah. 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 All right. Britter says it took only one can and she was very sloppy. Now British doesn't drink at all. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, let's get to the weather report. Got some fun stuff today. Actually, easy weather report to put together. So this will be good. Uh, all right, here we go. First one, the big news, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a win for plant-based meats in France, which has – France is really in the – in terms of trying to ban meaty-sounding terms for – uh, non-meat food. And in this case, their top administrative court, court uh, has suspended the ban that was supposed to start on May 1st, uh, the ban that would not allow the term steak on the label of vegetarian products. And and when they say steak, I don't I don't get this. I think it's probably bistec or something, a French, I and mean, that's the Spanish word. Maybe the French word is very similar. And I guess they use that word that's directly translated to steak, but I think they use it for veggie burgers over there. And so they were no longer going to be allowed to call that. And people were saying it's going to have to be called, you know, rectangular veggie patty or something like that. I don't know why rectangular, <laughs> but that's what they um, And so anyway, that's what it was. And then there were 21 others, escalope, ham, filet, prime rib. All these things were not going to be allowed for plant-based products, vegetarian ham, vegan sausage, uh, those type of things. But uh, now it's off, at least for now, the ban is suspended. They're saying serious doubt over the legality of such a ban. And I don't have more details than that. I'm sure if I wanted, I could find them. But it's just it's not that interesting to try to find more about why it's not legal. But um, yeah, I don't know. I guess this is good. You know, we we've gone back and forth over whether we think these terms are confusing, and we've seen many examples of products in this country that really are kind of confusing, even for us yeah. as plant based eaters. We're like that that doesn't quite seem fair. Like it seems like you could pretty likely buy the wrong thing if you're intending to buy meat, and you get that. So, yeah, I don't know where I stand on this, but I guess I like, I like wins for plant-based things. So I guess I'm glad about this. Yeah, I mean, I think, it, I think it's a win. I think it's, I don't know. It, it hopefully will, uh, maybe they can come up with terms that uh, aren't as confusing or whatever, if it is, in fact, confusing. But I think it's, I think it's just a win to, like, not severely limit what you can call something or, or make it, make you, force you to call it something that uh, sounds terrible, like rectangular veggie right. patty right 
it just seems like a simple convention that if you like put an asterisk at the end of it, that means it's not really it. Or like the not company or not co, whatever it's called, they put not in front of everything, which we'll talk about in just a second. They're on airplanes yeah. now. Uh, it seems like if you could like country by country or language by language say, this is how, this is our convention that's going to mean this is not the real thing. Um, and so there will be no confusion, but the point of what it's trying to mimic that will also be expressed. I don't know. That seems like that would be good, but can't yeah. imagine they'd ever agree on stuff like that. Uh, similarly, the Johannesburg High Court, that is South Africa. If you're not familiar with capitals of countries, uh, they've overturned a planned seizure of plant-based meat alternatives. That was going to happen down there, and that has also been uh, temporarily halted. Wait, wait, wait. Planned seizure? They were going to, they were going to take? Products, take them from the shelves, I think, the ones that were that were out there. I don't, I don't know how, because how long can these things last? You would think there'd be enough time for the you know, to turn the product over before the law goes into effect. Oh, but, oh, uh, this, these are ones that are called steak or whatever, burger. Yeah, same thing. Gonna, I mean, same idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. So they were going to take them off the shelves. Again, I don't know why they couldn't just like set the law to start in six months when all the products would have expired or been bought. But uh, no, they were going to do it. But now they're not. So I guess it's for the same reason. I don't really know for sure. Uh, so tide turning a little bit here. Uh, more bad news for meat people. But also kind of bad news for us, Doug. Kraft Heinz's Lunchables have been found by a Consumer Reports investigation to have relatively high amounts of lead, cadmium, and sodium. Sodium, not so scary, but lead and cadmium, I don't really want relatively high amounts of my food. Uh, they said it was 50% of the levels, uh, more than 50% of California's maximum allowable limit. So it doesn't seem like, I mean, the maximum allowable limit is, is a maximum. And if you're only half of that, I don't <laughs> see what is so troubling about it. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming the maximum is already kind of a conservative max anyway. I don't know, but, uh, apparently the ones that they were serving in schools and they are doing that because it, the FDA or the USDA, actually the USDA, um, has kind of included them in a school lunch program of some type. I don't know much about that. Lunchables? Uh, but the ones they were, yeah, but the ones they were finding in schools actually had much higher soda than the ones that were on store shelves. So. What? I guess they would make those in for the schools separately. At least they were going to package them separately. They're not going to waste money on packaging and they'll probably ship it in bulk. But I guess right. they were also making it differently. Uh, and they were having much more sodium than the package was. So that's that's not very good at all. Uh, no. And now Consumer Reports has urged the USDA to remove Lunchables from the school lunch program. Yeah. I mean, they should do that <laughs> regardless of these... Uh... <laughs> Of, right. of these this, the, these findings. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess it's not really bad news for us. But. Uh, no, but, there, but there's a bad better. side to it. Here's the bad side for us. This is Kraft Heinz, who has partnered with Notco uh, to make Notco. all these vegan junky things that we've all grown up loving, such as the mac and cheese, uh, which I haven't tried yet. But, you know, as I was reading this article, I was like, you know what? I, fine, whatever with the meat stuff. I, like, I'm not going to say this is a... a one more reason meat is bad for you, but it's one more reason big food, processed food, ultra processed food, whatever, why that's bad for you. Uh, yes. And by the way, in the article, Kraft Heinz did, did resort to the old, well, you know, the most recent science actually says that this broad categorization of, of ultra processed foods doesn't necessarily, you know, get, get things right all the time. And some of these foods actually have nutrients added to them. So they are especially good for the end consumer. So like, it, it's the same stuff. And I was like, you know, if, if you're going to eat that kind of food, this, this is going to happen. You're going to be exposed to this sort of stuff. But then I thought, you know what? Kraft Heinz is our, is our vegan savior right now as far as partnering with Notco and getting all these new vegan products mm -hmm. out there, not mayo. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're no better off. We're, the, it's the same, the same incentives, I'm sure, are there. Uh, and so this is, I, I don't know. I'm just not, I'm not so happy about that anymore. Did you ever eat Lunchables as a kid? Yeah. I don't remember if I took them to lunch or what when we had them, but we did. I feel like it was like on field trips I would have them mm. for some reason. What about I you? I mean, everyone did. I don't know they? that my family ever bought me lunch, but of course I had them. You know, they would come in, they'd come up at mm -hmm. times. They're, they're so bad. Great. I mean, they're just really <laughs> now they're <laughs> like, bad. Man, it was really good. I don't. I don't know what. I mean, I don't know how I didn't think it was gross. Britters, <laughs> Britters brings up the mini pizza kids, but I mean, I just remember those things are like. I mean, it's just a little, like, bland tortilla or something that you'd spread some bad tomato sauce on and then some raw cheese and like that's your pizza kit <laughs> it's like, maybe a pepperoni in there i don't know are the lunchables refrigerated 
I think so. I don't. They, they are. Okay, I don't, I don't remember that part for some reason, so. but it would have to be, I think, because it wasn't like it was cured meats. It was just regular right. cold cuts. Yes, anyway, every yeah. type of lunchable needs to be refrigerated. Okay. There you go. Well, it didn't seem gross back then. Now it seems gross. Uh, yeah. There were those plant-based Lunchables that we saw. I think they were in maybe Target yeah. or something. Not not the brand, different brand. Uh, I don't know if they're any better. Probably not, right? It's still going to be fake junk. Uh, all right, speaking of Notco, they have uh, announced uh, that some of their products are going to be available in the premium economy cabin of LATAM, L-A-T-A-M. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a Latin American flight thing. Um, they got six unique sandwich options there, including not Mila. I don't know what that is. Not chicken and not burger. And uh, they come with not mayo on the sandwich. So you get a whole bunch of not stuff. And then you get some fresh spinach, roasted tomato, and whole wheat ciabatta. Um, and other stuff. Onions, mushrooms, buttery vegan cheese on potato bread. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. Cool to have those options. If I guess you have to probably order that food special. No one's you're not getting a free meal on a flight within South America. Um, yeah, it's like what if our whole what if we just ate all not food all the whole whole time? Everything we ate was just not everything. It seems kind of weird. I mean, <laughs> all the time probably not a good idea. But I would be I would be good with uh, you know going to a restaurant or whatever, and there was a whole like not sandwich. Yeah, and it just had not not mayo, not cheese, not meat, not bread, not butter. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> but bread bread can be good. Bread would be all right. Yeah, I don't know. I, like every now and then, I guess. But it's just one hundred percent UPF. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Pamela Anderson has announced she's launching a vegan cookbook called "I Love You." Recipe from the heart. I don't think there's any UPF probably in this. It's her. She started out as a recipe card. She was going to give to her boys, and uh, it grew into a book. Uh, funny how that happens. It just did. And now she's got a book coming out. <laughs> so you think she's going to compete with Carly for the number one spot on uh, on the New York Times? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Pamela Anderson has a lot of fans from cooking who, who want to buy her cookbook. I don't think these celebrity cookbooks do that well. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, you see them at Barnes and Noble, and if you go to the cookbook section, you see the latest celebrity book, per, like celebrity non cook who has a book, non chef. Mm -hmm. uh, I never see those things on bestseller lists, but I don't look mm -hmm. at the list all that much, so I don't know. But like, I mean, no disrespect to Pamela Anderson, but I mean, why why would I buy her cookbook? You know, right? I thought the same thing. I wondered if this would be any good. She has an acting prowess, modeling mm -hmm. prowess. Uh, she has a skincare expertise, I guess now because she's got into this new cruelty free or no she yep. doesn't even wear makeup anymore she, she's not selling makeup stuff but skincare um but yeah i don't know i don't know about cooking but if, yeah. I, if I was a super fan of a celebrity i'd buy their book that came sure. out whatever yeah, it yeah be. cool and it's great that it's plant based yeah right all right and finally the biden harris administration in collaboration with u.s department of agriculture i guess that's the usda's food and nutrition service uh they have included or they've they've made updates to the special supplemental nutrition program for women, infants, and children, and they've included plant-based yogurts and cheeses. What is this nutrition program, Doug? Is this, is this like a food stamps deal, or is this just like, a, here's what you should eat? Yeah, WIC is, uh, yeah, where you can, it's basically food stamps, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, you, so not, it's not that they're recommending these things, it's that they're basically saying, because like you, can't, you can't use that stuff for beer or something, right? Exactly. Yeah. For, for WIC, you get money for certain foods that qualify for it. And uh, what about like tortilla chips? Uh, I, I mean, I have, that... no idea. I have no idea. But like sodas, probably not on there, I assume. Um, you know, it's, it's supposed to be vegetables, fruits, cheeses, meats, right. that kind of right. thing. So, mm -hmm. Okay. So before these things weren't included, I guess. So that's, that's I guess not. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. Um, yeah. So there you go. There is your weather report for. The day. It was a good one. <laughs> it was a good one. Uh, all right. On to the, uh, I, I just realized we forgot. We were trying to do reels and YouTube shorts every day, and we forgot to have one for today. Oh, so, yeah. That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Um, all right. Anything else? No, not too much here. Um, 
Dale Stevens says, I like the marketing, just put not in front of everything. Ha ha. Yeah, I mean, that could be that what I'm saying. Like you can put an asterisk at the end of terms. What if we just put not in front of all the terms? Attach the append the prefix to each word, put not in front of it. Unfortunately, now that's taken. That is trademarked, I'm sure. But that would be a nice way to differentiate this stuff. I think I'd prefer an asterisk over that if I'm gonna be buying. You prefer an that. asterisk? That'd be more confusing though. It'd be more confusing. But I just like I said, I don't want to just feel like I'm eating not stuff all the time. Like it just feels like <laughs> what, I'm like, am I not living? Like I, I don't want to like <laughs> not do a simulated life. Or uh, not so dying, have a little, you know, maybe it's the opposite. Maybe with uh with some of these foods that are healthier than the than the the original version, you know, maybe it's mm -hmm. not dying, you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> don't know. Um all right, a couple articles today, neither one very long, so stick with us. Please chime in. Give us your thoughts. Uh, we talked yesterday about oat milk controversy, whether oat milk is a healthy food or not. Um, we didn't talk much about the weight loss, potential weight loss properties of it. And apparently, according <laughs> to eatthis.com, people are drinking oat zempic to lose weight. And this is a uh, this is a social media sensation. I guess it's a TikTok primarily thing. And it's an oat-based weight loss drink people are using. Uh, self-styled, I guess, you, much cheaper than the real Ozempic would probably be, and probably fewer. Well, I don't know what the side effects are, but probably other health, less fewer health implications. Well, it's it's nothing like <laughs> Ozempic. <laughs> I mean, there's no there, there's there's nothing that uh, you know aside from the weight loss, right? And uh, there's there's nothing that makes them similar to each other, except no, that it's a not, good play on words. I I thought it was creative. I thought it is right. It is a play on words, and nothing more than that. Uh, what it is, is a half cup of rolled oats, one mm -hmm. cup of water, and the juice from half a lime. You blend them together. So you do get the whole oats in here. This isn't, I don't know how oat milk's made again. I don't know if they have extra waste fiber. I would assume that they do. But in this case, you don't. They blend it all together with the water and the lime. I don't know really what the lime would do in there, but maybe just, just make, make it, it not palatable. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they said uh, people have given the flavor to chalky water with bits of lime. I mean, not, not surprising at all that that's what it would taste like. But uh, what they do, people are replacing meals with this thing. And I didn't, I didn't see any specifics about how often you're supposed to do it. Um, but people who do it, they're losing weight. This person on day six has lost 5.9 pounds already, which is but basically is, is a that all they're eating and consuming. Or is no, that just it like replaces, I think it replaces. This is what I was like. Do you replace one meal a day with it? I think so. Because if okay. you're replacing all your meals with it, you're you're getting very, very few calories. And nutrients. Right. Uh, let's check out something here. Calories yeah. in a cup of oats. It says 307 calories in a cup. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere Wallets. in the article it said about 150. So 150 mm -hmm. for half cup. And then that lime is going to give you a few more calories. So if you had four meals a day of that, you're getting less than a thousand calories per day. And that's not really sustainable, but it would help lose weight very quickly if that was your goal. Uh, but it would not <laughs> probably do so in a healthy, healthy way. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, uh, uh, as uh, Kate says here, of course they lose weight, right? If you're replacing, uh, if you're replacing a meal, that's typically way more calories with what's essentially just, you know, oat water. Yeah. I mean, of course you're gonna lose weight. It's just a calorie reduction, right? I mean, there's nothing about oats that are making you burn more calories, right? Or or no property no, that's no. making you actually lose weight. Just no, the only relative to a property, they're saying the drink has a satiating effect, of course. Right? I mean, I think water can itself do that if you drink a large amount of water, what we said one cup of water. Um, and then for whatever reason, the oats contain a healthy dose of fiber that helps with fullness and satiety, says uh the nutritionist or dietitian that they recommended here a dietitian actually um and yeah i wish they would tell us how often you're supposed to do this uh because that would help us say anything about the, the goodness of it but you know if you are if you're doing it they're saying a pound a day is what you can expect to lose with it not sometimes up to a pound per day people are reporting losing with this so if let's say you're replacing 500 calories a day you're losing 500 calories a day with it i mean that wouldn't be nearly a pound that would be that'd be a pound a week I think around 3,500 calories is a pound or so. Hmm. Um, so I don't know how, how people are losing a pound a day with this. Unless like there's some property of the oats that suppresses your appetite later. I'm just not sure. 
Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. The dietitian here does not really like the idea of it. She says it's not not a balanced meal. You're not getting nutrients. You're not getting protein. She said butter or Greek yogurt or something in there. Um, chia seeds even add some color like blueberries. But she's basically telling you to make a smoothie instead of. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> add a bunch of fruit, you know, add some seeds, <laughs> yeah. maybe a little protein yeah. powder. So I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is, why this why this thing has taken off. Um, the name. It just it must sound enough Good to people branding. like this is something I can manage. Yeah, and the name. And it's not it's not like you're drinking vinegar or something. I mean, it's it's a normal right. food. It's just right. it's just not a lot of it. So anyway, no, I don't think we can we can't endorse that. Plant based morning show stamp of approval is not given for that. No, no stickers out to the Ozempic people. <laughs> no. Well, they can get a featured on sticker. They wouldn't get a, an approval. No, they could get a featured on. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then our other article today is um, okay. This is the this is the headliner. This is your Coca Cola for breakfast thing. Plant based news had this, and I like the story from Plant based news. It, it's really not much of a story. It's kind of just uh, sharing. This guy, Eric Mirbach's LinkedIn post. It, it's not really worth reading. He, he basically tells the Coca-Cola story. And his point is that people in the South are doing it. Uh, it's that mother of their kids Coke in the morning. And now these kids have become adults and do it with their kids. Uh, somewhere in here, they say that Coca-Cola uh, has actually intentionally tried to steal a piece of the coffee market. So that did happen. Uh, but that's mm. not really what's going on. It's more about the mothers giving it to the kids, and now it's theirs. And they're saying people who are still doing this, despite obvious knowledge that it's not good for you, they're saying they get safety, nostalgia, and motherly love. And then he references Seth Godin here and says it's the marketing equivalent of, as Seth Godin puts it, telling people that their mother did it wrong. Which I don't. I know a lot of Seth Godin books. I've read, a, I mean, not all of them, but a whole lot of them. And I've never heard him say that or read that anywhere from him. So I don't know where he did. Uh, but it makes sense. He's good at coming up with those kind of lines. And if right, if if that's what the message a marketer is trying to tell you, that marketer has a very very difficult job in front of them, uh, because it's just hard. And the idea that your mother messed up, uh, that's tricky. It is tricky. Or that you are a mother and you messed up. You know, right? If you did that all the time and then everyone's telling you you did it wrong or you know you shouldn't do that, then uh, you're gonna fight against that. You're gonna you're gonna naturally not want to feel like you did it wrong. You fed your kid Coke every day and that can't be bad for you. Right. <laughs> right. right. Uh, so this guy, he, he says he, he runs a branding content and venture studio. He works with purpose driven change makers, uh, ethical brands. So I assume he does a lot of vegan marketing because then he goes into what this means for vegan companies. And he says, uh, he says serving someone a vegan meal basically means telling them they weren't raised right. And I don't, I don't really agree with that part. Uh, I think you can serve someone a vegan meal in a much different way than that, especially with the right preface that says this is what we eat. And like, like as if you went to someone from a different culture's house and they served you what they eat, uh, it's it, not telling them they weren't raised, right? It's just saying there is this different way of doing things and that's the way we do it. Um, then he says, bringing a vegan option home for Christmas means telling your own mom she didn't raise you right. And this one's interesting. Having your kid bring a vegan lunch to school is telling all the other parents you think they're not doing it right and have been raised right. And then he says the emotional Which stakes I think are very kind high. Of true. Yeah, that's something I've I've only kind of recently realized this. Like I kind of thought all this time, because my approach to plant based diets has always, in, you know, in, in this, uh, in terms of having the website about it, my livelihood being from it, I've always kind of prided myself on having this sort of really open approach, not trying to be preachy about it, uh, being welcoming, being inclusive, and just not pushing this, saying this is what I do, and like if if you want to learn anything from or, or I entertain it, you know, good, but like, I'm not going to tell you, you should eat this way. Um, and I, guess I always assumed that, that people who knew me in the real world sensed that and they didn't feel judged by me or anything like this, but I just had this high feeling that like what perspective I now have perspective, but I, I'm like, I think probably a ton of parents who I've indirectly like through my kids, when they've heard our kids are vegan, they probably said those Frasers, they probably think they're better than everybody because they're vegan. And they mm -hmm. probably think everyone should eat the way they are. And I, I just bet it's, it's, you know, made people not like us. Uh, I'm certainly it has. Uh, there's no doubt that with all the parents we've come across yeah. through all the yeah. kids' classes and teams that there have been people like that who just never said anything. Uh, but I don't know. It's, it's hard. I don't like that. And 
I don't mind so much now, but back then I would have had a problem if I realized that. So maybe I just wouldn't let myself believe it back then. But yeah. I think it's true. No, I, I think it's true. And you have to wonder, like, do your kids ever not get invited to a play date or something like that where, where dinner would be involved because they don't want to have to deal with, you know, the parents mm -hmm. don't want to have to deal with finding a vegan option for your kid or, or whatever, or just aren't sure what to do. Or, or even more than that, like, are they just not invited because the parents have, you know, for whatever reason, or even, even the kid just doesn't like your kid because they're vegan. And it just, mm -hmm. the way they're raised, it just, that this doesn't fit in. And, or, you know, or the parents nudge them away from them or the parents speak badly about vegans, about, about your kid's diet. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Certainly this stuff happens. Who knows if it's happens with us and our people we know, but maybe. Uh, I mean, I've heard a lot of people talk about how bad parents you are. So, um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm sure that it happens. I'm sure that it happens. And, uh, you know, whether it's right or wrong, you know, it doesn't really matter, but I, I'm sure that that happens. And, and I don't know that bringing home a vegan dish for Christmas to your family is, is telling your mom that they did it wrong as much as just saying, as it is being helpful. I mean, we encourage people to do that, right? Like bring your own dish uh, or offer mm -hmm. to, you know, offer to cook or whatever. So I, that one I'm not so sure about, but, but I do think. Yeah, but, not, but um, sorry to interrupt, but like, I don't know if it's specifically if the actual bringing home of the dish matters, but the going home and saying I'm vegan now. So if, if I'm going to eat at your Thanksgiving table, I'm going to be eating something different than what you're serving, unless you're mm -hmm. going to make me this kind of thing. I think that's what actually feels like you did it wrong. And I think a lot of moms and dads do take it that way. And it's like, this is, yeah. you know, it's an insult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But so then, yeah, so I mean, so what, what can we, what is the takeaway here for right, exactly. the vegan? Like, what do you, what do you do with this? Fine. This makes sense. Right. But uh -huh. as we said, like when you're trying to change a worldview with marketing, and this is something Seth Godin does say all the time, uh, you know, you're just not going to win that. Like it, you're, you're just not, you have to align with the worldview and then mm -hmm. in some way suggest this shuttle, subtle shift of trajectory, but like you're not convince somebody that they're wrong uh, in your marketing. Uh, and marketing, of course, goes more for than just selling. It goes for spreading them a message or of some kind. So at the end, though, he's, he says, um, if we want lasting, sustainable change, we have to take them into account. That's the emotional stakes. Uh, they should be front and center because stats won't do it. Honest, good, human, and relatable communication will. And he's a he's a branding guy. He does content. So that's what he does is he communicates through messaging. So, of course, this is the takeaway. But, like, I, I don't know what you do with this. Like it's beyond meat or impossible right, meat, right. impossible food. You're trying to reach people who deal with all the stuff. Like in the very limited communication you have with that customer, how do you possibly do this? And I, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, things like the changing of the packaging. I mean, there's stuff that mm -hmm. makes it not so front and center. Like, hey, this is green and better. It's more looks like this looks like your stuff. And now we can be more subtle about what we think the benefits are. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I I really don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know how useful this is. It's interesting, and it's a good point, and right, it's a, right. it kind of does back up, like, okay, this is why it's so hard to, to advance the vegan movement. And honestly, we, we knew all, all this a lot. He just, he has good words for it. Uh, but we kind of already knew this. So I don't know what to do with it. I mean, is there a way to, like, say this is the same, but it's just the new version of it? You know, this is the... Because... It, it not saying that, you know, your old version was bad, but, um, you know, with what we know now and the science, the technology, blah, blah, blah. Now we have a new version and, uh, you can do the same thing just now with, right. With this new version. Yeah. If there's, if there's time to tell that message in, in a TV commercial or whatever marketing, they're doing, mm -hmm. there's, obviously there are, there are ways, but I think that's right. Like saying, and maybe not in so many words, but saying your parents weren't wrong. They didn't yeah. mean any harm. This is what people did back then. This is what we knew. And now we know this and mm -hmm. it's different. And our parents were wrong too. Or our parents, you know, not we're wrong, but our parents, we also came from the same background you did. You know, we we are like you, but yeah. now we understand it. I don't know. I mean, but yeah, how do you do that quickly when someone's browsing a grocery store? I mean, I and we're going to be wrong. I mean, as parents, right? <laughs> you yeah. know, I mean, I'm sure that there are things that we're teaching our kids and letting our kids do that, uh, 20 years from now will be frowned upon. Mm -hmm. 
Just and Garuda has that exact point. Says, I would hate if my parents, I hate my parents if they forced me to be vegan. My childhood is based on good food with meat and cheese. Mm. Um, the thing is, though, Garuda, here's the, here's, I mean, I try to take a very open approach with my kids. I don't, I don't want to force them to do anything. I, I really don't. Even if there was something that I felt stronger, even than I do about plant based diet, vegan diet, uh, I'd have trouble forcing it on my kids. I'd, I have to have, have them eventually choose it for themselves. Um, or I just wouldn't really, it wouldn't really sit right with, with my parenting. Um, but I, I don't hate my parents for this, of course, but I have so many regrets about how I ate as a kid. I ate so much. And this isn't necessarily a meat versus vegan thing. Yeah. The junk crap processed food that we ate all the time. Those little barrel hug thing. Remember those hugs? Barrel oh, full yeah. of fake yeah. fruit juice. We uh -huh. drink those all the time. And I don't know if we didn't drink Coca-Cola for breakfast, but I'm sure I had one of those for breakfast for a few times. Uh, mm -hmm. The icy pops. The we, we didn't drink water. It was you, you drank milk, orange juice, Coke, whatever there was. And if we were out of everything and you just had water, it was awful. I hated it. I hated to just drink water. <laughs> like it's a cereal all the time, cinnamon toast crunch, cookie crisp, like just tons of that stuff. I mean, uh, it was probably 90% of my calories, all that junk. And and the rest was you know normal food. My parents weren't, you know, they, they did all they knew. But yeah. I just I hate that. Right? I wish like when I think about my health now, I'm like all these things I can do now to my health. I can't undo all that. Or maybe you can undo some of it. But I think I heard Dr. Foreman say something about that these childhood habits or childhood behaviors that actually cause eventually adult illnesses. Uh, and so I'm always like, man, I, there's nothing I can go back and do about that. And so. Even if I, even if my kids ended up saying, "Hey, I wish you would have had us eat meat and cheese because that's really good," uh, on one hand, I can say, "Well, I gave you the choice all the time." Um, on the other hand, I'll be able to say, "I think because we avoided that, we also happened, you know, we lumped in with that all the processed food and everything else, and you didn't eat a normal processed food diet like most kids eat." Uh, and I will be very proud of that. So they ate real food, with the exception of some of these UPF, uh, you know, Beyond Burgers and stuff, but not really that much of that stuff. So, I, it's hard. Parenting not easy. I don't. Yeah, I don't know the right. answers. As we said, yeah. I'm a bad parent. People talk about that all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I would worry about this if my parents, if my kids uh, were resistant to it, and they're not, you know, and and they're they're young still, but like my older one loves it. So, um, you know, I, f I feel good about the direction we've and the lessons we've taught them about food and and uh, and you know, health. And, um, yeah, I mean, I have no regrets about that at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, good. you know, and there I'm may off. become a day when, when they are resistant to it, they do push back from it. And, and that's the case. Like we'll talk about it. We'll, you know, and they, they can do what they want. I mean, we don't, we never tell them that they can't do something. I mean, we, yeah. uh, well, I tell, we tell them they can't do things all the time. <laughs> don't get me wrong, but <laughs> you know, but I'm not, I'm, I'm, we're not like, uh, right. You know, militant with the hard them. part though is we've raised them to as much as we try to be open about it. They're raised in this environment where the norm in our house is you eat mm -hmm. vegan food, you don't eat animal products. So, yeah. like, even when they get to the point where they can make their own decisions, they've been steeped in this upbringing and like, deep, deep roots in in their psyches that like the way you eat isn't animal stuff. You eat plants. Yeah, uh, but that's so. But that's, but that's parenting, parenting, right? You have to right. right. And and if I didn't think that was good, uh, then I, then I wouldn't have done it. Yeah, I mean that's any religious household. That's any uh, any football culture household. You know that Alabama is the only team, and everybody else is terrible. I mean, like that's anything. That's parenting. That's just how you grow up. Yeah, yeah, right. And if and if and if all you got was a totally neutral upbringing with with no, like, there would there be not much interest in the world. There wouldn't be different kinds of people. Uh, so I think yeah. in general it's good. My mom's here. She has heard me say that she was wrong. Did everything wrong. <laughs> Mentions that she gave us Starbucks cookies before or for breakfast before school a thing. I guess I don't remember that too much, but definitely we got baked cupcakes and things for breakfast sometimes. Bakery with mm -hmm. all this frosting on them. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was junk for sure. But you know, it, I don't blame anybody. For that. Just it's, it's, it's the system. The system. All right. Um, I guess that's it. Vegan Stallion says it's the same with our mental health and personality. We can't undo the damage done in childhood. And, uh, yeah, that is, I worry about that too. I worry about all the subtle damages I do to my children without realizing it. Cause I read books mm -hmm. about this stuff sometimes and it's just very hard to not impart any of that stuff, uh, to 
pass your stuff onto your kid, your baggage. I mean, but what are you going to do? I mean, I don't know how you couldn't. I mean, of course, you right. should be mindful of it, right? But like, we are who we are, and and that comes out as parents. Yep. Yep. All right. He says, "Don't say Bama's the best team." <laughs> who's who's Bama's rival? Uh, Doug, do you know Auburn? Uh, Auburn. Yeah. I don't I think so. I don't know. No, is that All right. Georgia? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah. For for being a Southerner now, I'm I'm really really out of the college football scene. Okay, that's it. That's our Thursday show. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. Don't forget, go to that show tomorrow. It's 1 p.m. Eastern time. It's an afternoon show. Isabel's always on it. Sometimes Matt Tolman's on it. Usually Doug and I are both on there. Uh, and we do the same show. We gear it a little bit more towards fitness to make it no meat athlete, you know, worthy of the no meat athlete name. Um, but it, we also do plant-based morning show stuff. It's just, it's the same format of show. So come to that, mm -hmm. please. You've been saying you want a Friday show forever, and I don't see that many people who always wanted a Friday show. <laughs> Showing up at it. Bianca goes to it because she's off on Friday. Uh, but not a whole lot of others who from this crowd anyway. Some are. And I should I should give credit. I wish I knew exact names. I think Britters is off in there. I think Dale may be there, or maybe it's Kate. Anyway, a handful of these people go there. Yeah. All right. Anyway, look for that. 1 p.m. Eastern time. That's right. Have a great uh, have a great rest of your day, everybody, and we will see you tomorrow. All right, goodbye.